Hi everyone, welcome to Gateway Lectures. Today we have a good numerical. Let's solve the numerical. A metal plate of length L and width B is subjected to a uniform tensile uh, stress sigma at the ends. So it was subjected to a uniform tensile stress uh, sigma along the length axis L. Before loading, the slope of the diagonal OA is, was uh, B by L. What was the slope when the stress sigma is acting? Okay, before that, before doing this uh, type of question, uh, see this question, uh, when you see options, then it will be very easy to uh, proceed the way it should be solved. But when there are no options, when they are given numerical data and it was a uh, fill in the blank or numerical data type question, then we need to know a little uh, concept here, that is the concept of lateral strain and longitudinal strain. So what is lateral strain and longitudinal strain? Whenever there is a length L and the force is acting along the length, then that force is said to be acting along the longitudinal axis. So this is the longitudinal axis passing through the center because it is parallel to the length. Always the longitudinal axis will be parallel to the length of the member. And that strain experienced along the length is called longitudinal strain. So we will write uh, the definition of longitudinal strain. Strain experienced, strain experienced along the longitudinal axis longitudinal axis is called as longitudinal strain and what is a lateral strain lateral is always nothing but it is perpendicular to longitudinal always so whatever dimension it is perpendicular to longitudinal here we can if you can observe uh, l is uh, l is a length and d is a perpendicular dimension and it is a depth and b is also a perpendicular dimension it is a breadth so strain experienced strain experienced perpendicular to longitudinal axis is called as lateral strain and how can you see this suppose if you have a, a d diameter circular rod and having a length l and its diameter is d when this rod is stretched along its longitudinal axis then what happens to the diameter obviously the diameter reduces right so but uh, length length increases because we are applying a tensile force to the length l then diameter decreases if we apply a compressive force to the length l then diameter will increase so whatever be the nature of longitudinal strain the exactly opposite to that will be the nature of the lateral strain to uh, define how a material reacts to this i mean how long the material uh, makes itself uh, uh, suppose if it is increasing in length then what ratio it decreases its diameter or what ratio it decreases its perpendicular lateral strain that will be given by a material property called as Poisson's ratio Poisson's ratio is very important and it is different for different materials and Poisson's ratio is denoted by mu or else in some cases it will also denote by 1 by m in some derivations so what is the definition of the mu mu is always lateral strain upon longitudinal strain lateral strain upon longitudinal strain and if you can observe longitudinal strain suppose it is tensile in nature then it is taken as positive if longitudinal is tensile in nature then lateral will be compressive in nature so it will be always negative so always uh, this mu can be written as suppose if you take a case of this uh, circular rod for circular rod the lat suppose we are applying a force f along the uh, length l then the strain along the longitudinal direction will be delta L by L but the st strain along the lateral strain will be minus because here F is tensile force so the strain experienced along the longitudinal will be positive it is a tensile uh, strain but along the lateral will be a compressive strain and it is compressive will always denoted by negative so lateral strain will be delta D upon D or also delta R upon R this is the definition of Poisson's ratio uh, here we will go to the question and we will just solve it here uh, they are, they are asking after loading with a stress sigma along the longitudinal direction, what will be the final slope of OA? So to know the final slope, we need to initially know the initial slope. So initial slope, initial slope of OA. Always we know slope is nothing but dy by dx when it is a varying, varying curve. But here it is a straight line, directly we can write it as y by x. And here the y, dimension along the y is b and dimension along the x is l so initial slope is b by l and now, now we are applying a stress along the longitudinal axis so let the final dimension uh, along the length will be l dash and the final dimension along the breadth sorry here it is the depth actually it is b dash 
and this L dash will be we are applying stress along the length so L dash will increase so it will be L initial plus delta L but this is a longer term strain then it, the opposite will be the lateral strain so B dimension should decrease and it will decrease by delta B so we need to calculate delta L and delta B to proceed so first we will calculate um, uh, delta L we know delta L by L is nothing but longitudinal strain right delta L by L is nothing but longitudinal strain and the stress is acting along the longitudinal strain and also Young's modulus of the material has to be assumed here as E okay E is Young's modulus assumed here and from that strain will be can be written as a sigma L upon E actually delta L can be written as sigma L upon E we'll do a small correction here strain can be written as sigma upon E from the delta L we can write it as a sigma L upon E right this is the delta L value and we need to calculate delta B also for calculating delta B we will use the Poisson ratio okay by Poisson's ratio we can write a minus delta B by B lateral strain by longitudinal strain is nothing but Poisson's ratio here Poisson's ratio is also be assumed because E mu are always metal properties even if they are not mentioned in the question we need to take E and mu because it is a metal property we cannot avoid it metal property we cannot uh, simply assume something and do because they are metal property they need not be assumed they will be by default applied to the member from that we will get uh, delta b value as uh, delta b value as uh, minus mu into sigma l upon e into b because this is delta l upon l okay if you can do this so delta b is also known then what is the final dimension l dash it is uh, L plus uh, sigma L upon E that we can write it as L into 1 plus sigma upon E similarly B dash is B minus delta B that we can write it as uh, um, B minus mu B into sigma L upon E so from that if we take B common it will be 1 minus uh, mu sigma L upon E and now final slope because we know the b dash value and l dash value we will calculate the final slope the final slope here again it will be a straight line then directly we can write y by f that is equal to b dash upon l dash and the b dash value is b into 1 minus mu sigma l upon e and that divided by l into 1 plus sigma upon e and this is our final answer thank you for watching